But you know, uh, Sal Mamre's uh, probably the most experienced boxer in America right now, and he knows what he's talking about. And he picks Glenwood Brown, who is set to go. Barnes against Brown. Ten rounds, New York State Welterweight Championship for the introduction of the fighters. Here's ring announcer Ed Darien. From the Paramount, here at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, as Madison Square Garden Boxing presents Fight Night's main event. It's the New York State Welterweight Championship and is approved and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman. The judges, Jack DeFaris, Al DeCesar, and Carol Castellano. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round title bout, referee Wayne Kelly. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the red trim. He tipped in at an even 146 pounds. This young pugilist has 36 wins, four losses with 26 knockouts. The former USBA and New York State Rollerweight Champion, and is currently ranked number eight by the WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, Glenwood, the real beast, Brown. Brown. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He too weighed in at an even 146 pounds. This young man has 25 wins, one loss, with 11 knockouts. He is currently ranked number six by the IBF from Mount Vernon, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the New York State Welterweight Champion, Larry No Fear Barnes. Barnes. Again, Larry. All right, gentlemen, we're boxing for the New York State Welterweight Championship. We're boxing under the rules of the New York State Athletic Division. I expect a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. Come out. Boxing at the bell. Good luck. Welterweight Championship rules the New York State Athletic Commission in effect tonight. Scoring done on a 10-point must system. Standing eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Glenwood Brown, black trunks with the red trim and Barnes in the black trunks. Bruce, uh, Glenwood Brown looks like a completely different individual than the last time I saw him. Last time he weighed 155 pounds. Tonight, 146. That's a nine pound difference. That's a lot of weight. A guy in his weight class to take take off. Been that training is, in Florida and he's ready to go. And that has been his most effective weight. Larry Barnes, big local favorite, but stepping up in class. Brown's been in there with Melvin Taylor and Maurice Blocker, young Dick Tiger. Again, Larry Barnes is a very very busy fighter. Throws a lot of punches, and I, unless Glenwood can hurt him, I think that it may be a very, very tough fight. Glenwood using the left hand early. He's gone back to his old time trainer, John Davenport, who's with him since age nine. And then he switched gears, went to Edmund Verouette. Then he continued to make some changes, went to Victor Valley. Now he's back with Davenport. I don't think for sure Davenport has him in good condition for this fight. Round managed by Jim Finnell. His manager emeritus, the late Mike Jones. Arms landing, but heating some leather also. Brown with the right, a good combination by Glenwood. Bonds came back with a pretty good left hook, but again, uh, the puncher of the two is supposed to be Glenwood Brown, so I would suggest that uh, Larry Bonds get underneath those bombs and start working to that body. Glenwood Brown busy here in the first round, though, and usually that's Barnes, too. Knockout power, well, Barnes has 20, has 11, and Brown has 26. straight ahead. 
said that's his style. Should do it for the first. You can hear those punches kind of zinging for Brown, and we did not hear that for a while. Good snapping those punches tonight for Brown. I want you to and one of the things that Davenport says he's working on, Gil, he's that sitting jab. down on his punches. Want that jab. He establish that jab. He's coming at you, okay? And you can faint with the jab a little bit, okay? You can faint with it a little bit, all right? But faint and shoot, okay? You get into his thing a little bit, okay? We know what we gotta do. We got our plan. In the other corner, Larry Barnes, manager trainer, Albino Dragon. He's in the front of you, three punch, and then go to the body, okay? You gotta stay downstairs, okay? You gotta do some move first. Three punch, that's his left elbow, you're inside, boom, boom. Al Citro working the corner with Dragon. Second round, scheduled for 10. New York State Welterweight Championship. Larry Barnes and Glenwood Brown. That's what Barnes has to do. He has to keep busy, keep pumping those hands. Barnes has come out with purpose here in the second. This is certainly a different Glenwood Brown to face, face Edwin Fury. Yes. See the snap in his punches. Does Glenwood Brown mind being a counter puncher to fight like this, Joe? I know he doesn't. You know he's an experienced fighter, of course. He can lead and he can counter punch. The one fault that I find with Glenwood Brown is he just very seldom ever uses the left jab. Sometimes that left hand actually is behind his right hand. Both fighters just slugging away. And there was, there was a case where Brown threw two punches and missed, but then landed the third, and Larry Barnes just did not peg back. He's going to have to punch every time Brown punches to win this fight. Barnes has wanted this fight for a long time. Barnes only lost his professional career to Saul Mambi. Barnes reaching a little bit there. Jump in there a little bit more often. Again, an uppercut by Brown. Now well, the refs letting him go now, Gil. A lot of wrestling. A lot of wrestling. A lot of wrestling. A lot of hugging on the inside. Off the clinch. It's Brown with a hook. But back comes Barnes. Barnes landed a good, solid left hook. Shook Lennon Brown a little bit. Barnes doubled up there with the left hand. Brown has him against the corner as both fighters slug it out. This is the action fight we expected. Seconds of round two. Ryan the Shrine. Here's the windup. And the two. Let's take a look at this action. Eh? Here's Bonds. Bonds is trying to attack, and Glenwood comes up with a good right hand uppercut. And that's the time to throw that right hand inside. Very dangerous to throw up across from the outside. Third round scheduled for 10 for the New York State welterweight title. I'm still waiting to see if Glenwood Brown is going to throw a left jab. That's the one thing, in my opinion, he just doesn't do. He doesn't set up his punches. 
He's got the experience. He can move around. He can box a little bit. The snapper jab. I haven't seen one in the entire fight. But there he is, counter punching again. Larry Barnes is going to have to try to hustle him, try to out work him. But then we've gone against. Stepped back and landed that uppercut. And it looks as though Glenwood was ready to play the role of counter puncher because he knew he was getting in Barnes. And again, some wrestling on the inside. Referee Wayne Kelly lets him go. Brown landed the left hand. Barnes comes back. Well, Bond said he expected a war, and he has a war right now. the stronger guy in, in a fight such as this, Gil? Well, it's a question of uh, which guy has the most stamina now. Brown landing. Again, Brown is the... Uh, I, I thought that the, the Larry Barnes would outwork uh, them with Brown. I thought Brown had a hurt him, but right now, Brown is the busier of the two. He's throwing more punches, putting more punches together. I'm more focused. I'm not looking beyond this fight. This fight brings me back to the top. Barnes goes to the belly. Good left hook to the body by Larry Barnes. Two quick shots to the belly by Barnes. And Brown breaks off the ropes. But again, it's a lot of tugging and pulling. Again, Brown never sets up his punches. Final seconds of the third round. Holland. Headed to the fourth round of the Paramount in New York City. Bruce Beck and Gil Clancy with you. Just the main event of the night, New York State Welterweight Championship. Larry Barnes, the black trunks, Glenwood Brown, black trunks, red trim, white high socks. Bruce, you notice that there is no lateral movement in this fight at all. Nobody's moving to the left, right, left, right. They're not trying to confuse each other. It's straight line boxing with both guys. And if we had a punch stack computer, we would find out that there are not a lot of punches being thrown per round. There's more wrestling going on. A lot of wrestling. But both of these guys are trying to prove something to each other. Brown goes to the body. Larry Barnes doubling up with the left hand. Beautiful combination by Larry Barnes. On the clinch, Brown is getting around Barnes' back with the right hand. Glenwood Brown throwing three punches with no return for Larry Barnes. That surprises me. Barnes got off the left and then he snuck out of trouble. And back comes Brown. Barnes didn't like that action along the ropes at all. I do, Gil. What do you okay. think so far? Very surprising fight. Um, I never seen Larry Barnes fight, but um, I heard okay. from what he was telling me that Glenn was going to walk right through him, and Larry Barnes is showing different. Now he's a strong kid, there, buddy, and usually he's very busy. Barnes landing twice there. Buddy, been a lot of wrestling thus far. 
Well, I think Glenn was doing the wrong thing by fighting Barnes inside because Barnes had the shorter arm. Well, you know, buddy, I, I mentioned that, that we're already into the fourth round of the fight. I haven't seen Glenwood Brown throw a jab yet. Every punch is a bomb. You have to set the guy up sometimes. It's something, something he's not doing. He's fighting Barnes' fight right in the trenches when he's a boxer. There's a solid uppercut by Glenwood Brown, and Barnes answers with the left. But Glenn was hit mostly gloves, you know, most of his punches. If he just let his punches flow, I think that uh, he can make this fight much easier than what it is. It's difficult to get a flow, though, buddy, because everything is ending up as a, as a hugging match. But it was like fighting a freaky world. You just got to stay outside. So four rounds in the book. there for Larry Barnes. Well, James Buddy McGurk will be back in action on January 12th at the Paramount to take on Gennaro Leon. This is a mandatory challenger for Buddy. And the other day we caught up with Buddy on the streets and he looked rather warm and rather cozy. He was just outside the garden and there he was in that big furry coat. <laughs> and Buddy, did this have anything to do with the fact that you had tonsillitis and that fight you were supposed to have with Leon and it was postponed. Most definitely. I decided when I trained at home, I don't want to catch no cold, so I really got <laughs> the biggest coat they had. Buddy, did they give you the shoes with the coat? <laughs> they don't have no made for my size. You know, when I was a kid, you buy a pair of sneakers to give you a baseball bat. <laughs> now it's a felt coat, you get a pair of sneakers. <laughs> so, Buddy, if you win that one, it's on to Colonel Whitaker, huh? Most definitely, but I just want to get this one out of the way and go home and relax a little bit. This is the fifth round of a welterweight bout between Larry Barnes and Glenwood Brown for the New York State Welterweight Championship. Gil, how do you have it scored so far? I have a 2-1-1 for Glenwood Brown. But again, the rounds are very, very close. Great, lean and, back, uh, step back, step back. Neither fighter is showing any dominance in the fight up to now. And Barnes is doubling up when he's landing punches, buddy. Nice left hook by yeah, Larry Barnes. He's throwing the combination, you know, and that's what Glenwood should be doing from the outside. He's got the arm reach to stay outside. Glenwood looks like he wins that tug of war in the middle, but that doesn't mean much. Starting to score punches. If the fight continues like this, he can outwork them with Brown and score a big upset. Again, Brown just has not been cool in this fight. He hasn't looked to pick a spot, set the guy up. Every punch is a bomb. He may, he may land one, but up to this point, it's uh, been very, very difficult. Bill was at the press conference that he's going to fight his beastly style. I think he picked the wrong opponent to fight his beastly style with. Good left hook by Larry Barnes. Brown's best punches thus far have been the left hand and usually the uppercut. Yeah, but it's a left hook all the time, Bruce. He just never sets, lets Larry walk into that left jab. It was that double hook, though. They trade punches. But Barnes stays busy. change their style because the way the fight's going now it's just going to be up for grabs. And again, right now Barnes is out hustling him. Barnes landing three, four, five, six punches. He seems to be picking up the pace as each round goes on. Fifth round in the books at the Paramount. It's hard to believe what life would be like without pencils, telephones, computers, and even paper clips. 
And yet these everyday products were created by people much like you. If you have an idea, invention, or new product you'd like to submit to industry, Invention Submission Corporation has a free inventor's kit to help you get started. The kit contains a form for recording and dating your invention, an information brochure, and other materials of interest to inventors. Invention Submission Corporation is one of America's largest invention service companies. We can show you how your invention can be packaged and submitted to industry. So call ISC now for your free inventor's kit. For your free inventor's kit, call toll-free 1-800-592-1222. That's 1-800-592-1222. Call now. champion James Buddy McGirt ringside as we head to the sixth round of this New York State welterweight championship. Glenn with the Real Beast Brown and Larry Barnes. And Buddy coming in, question whether Barnes could take a punch. All right, for the first time in the fight, Bruce, I've seen uh, Glenwood Brown use a left jab. He started out the round, snapped a few good left jabs out. Now let's see if Hassan Mamby's uh, analysis of the fight is correct. Here's Glenwood Brown now boxing and jabbing, which he did not do for the first five rounds. And Sal Mamby said it was going to be a tough fight for about five rounds, but then Glenwood Brown's experience should take over. Let's see how good an, an, an analysis he gives of this fight. And you were right, Gil, a change in style here in the sixth. Buddy, getting back to that question, what about the chin of Barnes? Well, he showed he can take a good, good whack tonight. You know, sometimes, you know, it takes a certain fight to show your abilities, and this one is showing on Larry Barnes' abilities. You know, he's uh, got up for the fight, he got in good shape, he's taking good shots, and he's fighting at a very fast pace. Get back. So, Will Lose Your Joy is proving himself tonight as a both way contender. Barnes currently ranked number six by the IBF, number 27 by the WBC, and Brown ranked number five by the WBC. You know, buddy, the way your Glenn was throwing those punches in the first five rounds, every punch a bomb, that can take something out of you. Oh, most definitely. I um, think that's why he's uh, boxing out to uh, get his rhythm and get his rhythm back, and he's going to come back and put the pressure on again. But I think he should continue to do what he's doing now and make the fight easier. So after five rounds of hugging and dancing inside, we finally see a change of style that was set up. Glenwood Brown. I think they heard Gil when Gil was coming with me last round. He knows his stuff, doesn't he, buddy? Yeah. Coming up about a minute to go in the sixth round. Gil, if he's going to change his style, he's got to throw the jab. Got to throw the jab, but then he's got to throw something behind the jab because Larry Barnes is coming in behind that left jab with some pretty solid punches. That was, that was Glenwood Brown's experience. By the real beast. And Barnes counters now. Ben was on his toes. Barnes showing some pretty good footwork of his own. Glenn was got a confused one. You know, Barnes is frustrated. Glenn has to continue to do what he's doing so he can take him out. 15 seconds to go in the sixth. Didn't hurt Brown at all. Look, if my mother doesn't care about my homework, why should I care? Show me a parent who really cares, and I'll show you a kid who can learn. I'm Wes Hart. Happy holidays from the Cable Adnet family to yours.
If you're looking to buy yourself the right car, come the trophy in my We're not too far. Why gamble with the dealer? Shop 1991's number one retail Nissan dealer. With the same owner for 23 years, trophy has been the symbol of fair pricing and customer satisfaction. Hi, I'm Jim Ross, sales manager. In 13 years with trophy, I've never seen better values than we have today. The new Altima and Quest are now in stock. So come to Trophy Nissan at 635 in Galloway and Mesquite. We move to round seven, scheduled for 10. Well, let's see if uh, Glenwood Brown continues his boxing or if he goes back to his bombing and mauling. Do you think, Buddy McGurk, that the strategy worked well for Brown in the sixth round? Yeah, the boxing was definitely because Barnes uh, was committing himself sooner than he wanted to, and he was uh, keeping himself open. So he was just to continue to do that. Don't look for the knockout. The main thing is you get the win. Back they go to the wrestling part of the show. Double left hook by Larry Barnes. Going to the body. Now an uppercut by Barnes. Well, right now he's backing Glenwood Brown up. He looks crisp in the seventh round. And he's even throwing the jab. Now he's jabbing. Throwing nice combinations to Glenwood Brown. And Glenwood Brown just is not pegging the way he was in the earlier rounds. Buddy, I think we'll find out in the next four rounds if Brown is in shape. We found that both were in shape, that's for sure. They found out a real fast pace. But Brown was clearly not in shape when he was upset by Edwin Curette on September 17th here at the Paramount. Well, sometimes it takes a fight like that to wake you up and you know, make sure that you can't take nobody like it, no matter how bad the record is or who they are or how bad this city chin is. There's a big left by Brown. More or less caught the Larry Bonds off balance. It's a good one to work now. He's got Bonds retreating. Again, the Bonds beat him to the punch, though, buddy. When he should have pegged, he waited, and sure enough, Larry Bonds hit him on the chin with the left hook. He's got them short arms, Bonds, so when you're inside, you know, he can do damage before you can. You notice how many punches that Glenwood is missing in this fight? Yeah. Every time Larry moves his head, Glenwood seems to miss. And he's trying to drop that bomb on him. You know, and like you said earlier, it takes a lot out of you when he shouldn't be doing that. Also, when you look to drop the bombs all the time, it just never seems to happen. You have to let, have to let them come by themselves, buddy. You have to set them up and just let your punches flow. And sure enough, all of a sudden, you hit the guy with one. You don't even think it's hard. And all he's wobbling all over the place. Nice combination by Larry Bonds. And then the ground tries to come back. And they say the ones that get you, the ones you don't see. You know, Bonds can see all the ones the ones throwing. He's telegraphing them. Final seconds of the seventh round. Barnes doing a good job blocking punches by Brown in this round and landing. And slipping punches and landing. Clever. Very clever. Hey! Seven rounds complete. Three to go. Larry, Man, this one is definitely man, wide open for anybody's uh, taking. Jab right hand. You gotta finish All right, Gil, how do you have it scored? I have it dead even. Okay. Three, three, and one even. I have it four, three for Barnes. It's a left LB, okay? If this fight continues to go this way, I would not want to be the judge or a judge. I don't want to be in the audience when they announce the decision. All right, buddy, let's talk strategy. First of all, Glenwood Brown, three rounds to go. What are you thinking? What should he be doing? Same thing he did in the six. Keep boxing, stay out of the inside with Larry Barnes. All right, what about Barnes? Pick up the pressure okay. like he's doing, but when he gets inside, he's got to move both hands. He's got to stay more busy. Well, if it's based on what you just said, then Barnes did and had the better round in the seventh. Almost definitely. And that's what he has to continue to do because, you know, it's a big fight, and he's got to, he's got to want it more right now. Okay. okay. See, Glenn has been there. He has it, so Barnes has got to pick it up now. 36 and 4, Glenwood Brown, 25 and 1, Larry Barnes, New York State Welterweight Championship on the line. Brown, black trunks, red trim, Barnes in the black trunks. Good left hook by Larry Barnes. And Barnes is showing a good snappy left jab now. And Barnes has been more economical with his punches in the last three rounds. He's not missing much. And a lot more accurate than Glenwood Brown. Separates the two. Again, a, a good 
defensive move there by Barnes. This is just such a tough fight to score. Boy, it's tough, buddy. Most definitely right at that. Because, you know, one guy's hitting the hold, another guy's hitting the hold. And, you know, if you adjust. Now, now Glenwood Brown turned to Southpaw. And he lands the uppercut. And he lands the uppercut. Good series of punches there by Brown. Well, he switched to Southpaw and it seemed to confuse uh, Larry Barnes. And he's fighting Southpaw now. And he's using the right hand effectively. has to use that left jab. He has to go behind that left jab. Now he's starting to walk in and forgetting all about the jab. You got to get more business. These last two rounds is going to tell it. You can't give up an inch, especially in a fight like this. Good left hook by Larry Barnes. And you know, buddy, there used to be uh, a lot of talk about you fighting Glenwood Brown. And, and you know, the two top welterweights in New York, but that fight never took place. I think you would have been using your footwork with the oh, most definitely. Up to the mark, away from the mark, side to side. I'll take them to school. <laughs> 40 seconds to go in the eighth round. And now Barnes is coming back in the round. And Barnes leads against Brown. Brown dominating the first minute. Came back in the middle. A war, a total toe war as they finish the eighth round. Picking a group say? fight what of the say? night. What did he say? And we had some good action already, what but this one is right what there. The winners of the group okay, fight of the night no received okay. tickets to future Paramount okay. Fight okay. Night, night events to be donated to the fight. community service organization of their choice, plus a group gift now. pack. And don't forget, Gil, at the end of the year, okay. Brute will make a $3,000 donation to the Big Brothers Big Sisters in the names of the fighters involved in the fight of the year. And here's a look at the Brute fight of the night thus far. Julio Cesar Green defeating Bo James on September 17th. And Aaron Superman Davis over Craig Cummings on October 15th. Right, second time. What can you speed? The power's there. What can you speed? Okay. Two rounds to go. Anything can happen here. And round nine. I have the fight dead even, Bruce. And Larry Barnes' tape is coming loose. I hate to see that. As soon as they get into some action, I'll probably the referee will step in and uh, have them fix the tape. Good, good left, left hook. Good left hook. Every bit of leverage on that left hook from Larry Barnes. And he really reached out to lay in that one. That Barnes ahead by a point. Picks off that punch. But do you notice that Glenn Brown is moving around, but he still is not using that left jab. Yeah, there's finally he threw a jab. And another one. That's what he has to do. This is not a fight where you can take a breather at any time. Well, Larry Barnes does not allow you to take a breather. But he's there all the time, always trying. Barnes again sneaks through with the left. Brown a bit frustrated here. Barnes putting the pressure on. Came back, led with the right hand, and came back with that left hook. The girl stuck the moving box. He tried it out there. That's right, he was off balance. He moved his right foot forward. He still came back and just almost tried the same move again. But he watched his feet. Watch him take that right foot and step forward. He came back with the left hook. Over here. Time! Now time taken by referee Wayne Kelly to fix the tape on the glove, the right glove. 
And you see, that can hurt Bond because he was really starting to get into a good rhythm, winning the round pretty good. Now he had to stop there. It's actually the left glove, and quickly. Did that bother you, buddy, if you were fighting, all of a sudden you, you get hot, you're throwing nice combinations, and stop, and then now you have to start all over again. It was quick, though, Bill. It's like a lack of break of concentration. Bruce, right, it takes a second, Bruce, and that's a, a second too much. He's Glenn LeBron throwing the bomb again. And now Brown is dancing around, but he's not throwing any punches. Barnes landing a couple, including the left. And Barnes off balance, he's just slipping a bit. And now Brown is back. Brown comes alive again for Barnes. Barnes countering. Step back, Brick. Buddy, all of a sudden, Brown looks frustrated. Yep. He, uh, what else was playing? I guess it looked like he's kind of confused. He didn't know whether to fight him inside of boxing. But both guys are landing, and Barnes with the better of the exchange with the left hook. Ten seconds to go in the ninth. One more round still to go. And that is it. It was unofficial that time because of the stoppage. Let's listen to the corner man. Let's let us win. We're going all out. You can go all out? Yes, sir. We've got to put him down now. Going all out is not going to do it unless you put him down. Okay? Okay. You understand me? Uh huh. You understand me? Yes, sir. Okay. Next round, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Touch him up. Okay? Okay. There's okay. no holding. There's no holding. Nothing you got. got. Everything you got. Everything you got, and it's got to come down. Okay. You understand me? Go straight out, come back with the jab, okay? You gotta come back. You're slipping beautiful, but you're not coming back with the punches, okay? You got a close fight, son. You need this round big. Come on, Larry. You let him take this round. Come on, you're in their territory, okay? You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Huh? It's now or never, son. Now or never. You understand? Let's go. Here we go. This is it. Tenth and final round for the New York State Welterweight Championship. A very close fight and a difficult one to score. Glenwood Brown against Larry Barnes. Barnes comes out winging. You know, Glenwood Brown is trying, 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 but he just is not using his experience or his ring smarts at all. It's a case, buddy, sometimes you try too hard in the fight. Most definitely, you know, you get caught up in the crowd, or, you know, like, like anything can just make you try to talk and stick you knock the guy at any time. Here's back Gil Clancy and WBC Welterweight Champion James Buddy McGirt ringside as Barnes lands a right. And Brown keeps missing that right-hand bomb, and when he does, he throws himself completely off balance. That's been his most effective punch, that right uppercut. Inside, he's like trying to have a for Sugar Ray Robinson and Winnie Cup. He just can't do it. That's right, the guy's just too busy. He's got those short arms, as you mentioned. Takes full advantage of it. Brown got nailed with a right, and then a left. Barnes with the better of the exchange. And he's back in Glenwood Brown up. That's totally different than what happened earlier in the fight. No one left it all around one through five. Well, you know, throwing those bombs, you know, you're not relaxed, you're not setting anything up, you take a lot out of here, as we had mentioned. But, buddy, you know, uh, we don't know how the officials are scoring this fight. <laughs> Again, I wouldn't want to be a judge in a fight like this. Well, earlier I had it for Glenwood, but I think Bonds has swept the last few rounds. I, I, have, I have Bonds ahead in the fight. I think if he just gets an even round this round, he's the, the winner of the fight. And up to now, I think he's winning the round. Most definitely. You never know, as Gil mentioned with the judges, we could end up with a draw here. 50 seconds to go in the fight. Larry Barnes needs this win to take the next step to get a chance to move the title contention. 
Brown needs this fight to get back into the picture. And you can see Brown is trying so hard. Trying to get leverage with every punch. Every punch he's punching a little too wide and missing his punches. Barnes lands a left, but Brown comes back. And now the tape again is loose on Larry Barnes' glove. But I don't think referee Kelly will stop it now. Combination by Barnes. I think that was Brown's best punch of the fight. Both fighters exhausted. And that is it. And the crowd appreciates it. they have for each other, Gil. <laughs> that's, that's what boxing's all about. They're always saying that they're trying to hurt each other. That's the main object of boxing. They're full of baloney. As soon as that bell rings, the tougher the fight, the quicker they show respect by grabbing each other and hugging each other. What an ending to this one. Just, just in the, and, and the, again, I think Brown landed his best punch of the fight, but someplace right around here. There it is, the right hand. It looked like Larry Barnes may have been a little shook up with that punch, but uh, he wasn't about to go any place in this fight. He had all the determination in the world. So, Gil, how do you have it scored? I have, I have uh, Larry Barnes one point ahead, but again, it's such a tough fight to score. I have Larry Barnes ahead 97 to 95. And you know, Bruce, I don't like to give even rounds. I scored three even rounds in this <laughs> fight. Buddy, what do you think? 5-4-1 Barnes. So we're talking about a very close decision that can sway one way or another, yeah. according to what the referee, or the judge in this case, thought they saw with one punch in a round. Uh, sometimes also reputation means a lot. They may have given one fighter or the other more credit for the punches that he landed. A good action fight. Oh, just a very, very good action fight. Two guys very, very determined. This is one fight I'm glad I was a spectator. <laughs> Buddy, a good action fight, even though you know, there weren't a lot of punches thrown compared to some other fights. There was a lot of leaning also. But I like the way Barnes, he placed his punches very well. You know, he knew where he was putting them in the floor. Yeah, I thought that Glenn would miss a lot tonight. Yeah. Trying to punch a little too hard. Again, we're talking about trying too hard. All right, we're getting set for the decision. Let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, for the fans here in attendance, let's hear it one more time for these two young men. And the scoring by points as follows. Judge Al De Caesar observed 96-94. While Judge Carol Castellano, she scored it 96-95. And Judge Jack DeFerris, he watched it at 98-92. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the New York State Runaway Champion, Larry No Fear Barnes. Barnes. The biggest win of and his career. Time for Larry Barnes, Barnes of Mount Vernon, New York. Nice Close to 26 and one. We have three more and retains the New York State Welterweight Championship. So a unanimous decision, one judge going by one point, one by two, and one separating the fighters by six points. I thought that was a, a wide discrepancy, buddy. Most definitely, without a doubt. It was closer than that. But it was unanimous. And you know, Brown's had a lot of big fights, but for Barnes, this was the singular most important fight of his life. Well, when I spoke to him the other day, you know, he asked me, you know, he came over, he spoke to him, and I said, look, Larry, you know, you gotta understand, this is your title fight right here. So this is the fight that's either gonna make you or break you. And he understood that, and he told me he was gonna go out there and do it, and he did it. Buddy, thanks for joining us. And thanks world for having champion. me, Wish you the best of luck. See you in January. All right. James Buddy McGirt, the WBC welterweight champion. Here's the reaction of Glenwood Brown, the disappointment, and he has dropped four of his last six. And it was a tough one to lose.
Larry Barnes retains the New York State welterweight title. We'll be back. Larry Barnes scoring a unanimous decision over Glenwood Brown. And much respect for each other. Evidence there by the hug at the end of the fight. The winner, Larry Barnes, is with our own Gil Clancy. Congratulations, Larry. Hey, you fought a guy that's fight for, twice fought for the championship of the world. Now you just beat him. He's ranked in the top ten. You weren't. Where does this put you now? Gil, thank you. I would like to thank MSG for promoting this fight. Well, this puts me, I hope it puts me in a title shot against one of the three body champions. But uh, my manager here, that's up to him. Whatever he wants to do, I'll be more than gladly to do what my manager wants. Well, you fought a real tough fight tonight, and the style you have is entertaining entertaining for the fans. You're the kind of guy that these three champions should be looking for. I think I think maybe in the near future somebody's going to ring your doorbell. I hope so. When opportunity knocks, I must answer. And I must be prepared to answer. And uh, I'm willing to take that uh, opportunity. Well, you were in great shape for this fight. You know, Glenwood Brown is known as the puncher. Did he hurt you at all in the fight? No, I wasn't hurt at all. He surprised me, but uh, I had to come right back and I trained for this particular fight. And uh, that's why I came the distance. I won the distance. You know, I think the the difference, uh, Larry, the fact that Glenwood Brown in the first five rounds forgot a jab completely. You were scoring points with that left jab. A lot of a lot of the rounds were very close to score, but we gave them to you because of your more accurate punching and because of your left jab. Well, yeah, the jab, I, I, the jab. Me and my manager's been working in the past on the jab. I said the jab would make a real difference. He told me if I use the jab, I got the fight. So I used the jab, and that was the fight for me. Okay, congratulations again, guys. Now let's go back to Bruce Beck at ringside. So congratulations to Larry Barnes, who calls himself a modern-time slugger. Has lost only once in his professional career to Sal Mambi. Meanwhile, for Glenwood Brown, much disappointment tonight. Losing the unanimous decision, dropping his second consecutive fight, and he's standing by right now with Gill. Glenwood, that was a real, real tough fight. Do you know, do you think, do you think maybe it was a case in this fight that you were trying too hard? Well, you know, first of all, you know, I wish him the best of luck, you know. He got the decision tonight, you know. I mean, it wasn't that I tried to, I just didn't execute it the way I should have. But you know what, 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 what I noticed in the fight, every punch you threw in the first five, five rounds was a knockout punch. I mean, you forgot the jab completely. I didn't see you throw a good solid left jab in the first five rounds of the fight. Yeah, you know, that was my mistake. You know, I should have used my jab more. I should have executed the way I should, you know. Uh, you know, he fought a good fight. You know, I take my hat off to him, you know, but it was a tough enough, a tough enough fight to um, deserve a rematch. Well, I think all the fans would like to see a rematch anytime you go in, and, and especially with Larry Barnes, it's going to be a great fight. Maybe Bobby Goodman will listen to you. Now let's go back to Bruce Beckett ringside. All right, thank you very much, Gil. So Glenwood says it was a case of lack of execution. More on Fight Night. When we